Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Baby's not even on screen. Well, he is, but so uh, the uh, the uh, Arnott's Wagon Wheel milkshakes we've been looking at. But anyway, forget that. <laughs> anyway, good morning, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream Plus. My name is Graham Day, and this man with the world's most beautiful smile is me. And next to me is Bib. <laughs> 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 Nearly there. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'll read. Good weekend, Bib. Yes. I did actually. It was a it was a chilled one to be fair. Didn't really do that much. I didn't. I, I only played golf yesterday because it was competition on Saturday, uh, and it was Father's Day this weekend over in the UK. So I spent it with my granddad in the back garden while I was doing a barbecue. Just I know that like, America has different Mother's Day. Does it have different Father's Day as well? Because I did see sure. I did see some Americans tweeting Happy Father's Day yesterday, and I didn't know if that was just a to UK followers or uh, yeah. or if it was. A, yeah, uh, 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 do you know what? If it, uh, if it is, Happy uh, Father's Day. All over the place, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that, it was Father's Day this weekend over in the UK. Uh, I'm sure Graham will go into great detail about what he got because it is fucking awesome. Uh, you might want to. This is the cue for you to be able to go and get your tweet and show everyone. I don't know what you mean. Um, I wouldn't self, <laughs> I wouldn't self promote. Um, but yeah, yeah, Saturday, spent it with my granddad and the rest of the family having a barbecue. Yesterday, went and gone played a round of golf uh with my mates shot 100 so i'm consistently getting a little bit better so my average i think now is 100 um so i'm really happy with that gg last night though stayed up till half past two this morning to watch the remaining episodes of the undertaker's last ride mate was it good what what it, emotional mate <laughs> if, if you are heavily invested in wrestling or was previously and he was from the time then, my God, it is an absolute must-watch. It was incredible. I saw him trending this morning. It was saying something about it. he's te teasing he might, he might be having his last match, might be retiring or something like that. Yeah, thank you, Taker. It, basically, his last match was at WrestleMania against AJ Styles, um, but it wasn't really a match. It was like a live-action sequence. So they started filming this documentary, I think, three years ago, just before WrestleMania 2018. That's when they started filming this documentary. So they've been filming it for three years to get to this point. And it's so weird seeing him change from then to like what he is now. He doesn't look any older, but he gets fitter and fitter because obviously he's wrestling a little bit more. Um, but I'm not going to spoil it for anybody else. But if you are invested in wrestling in any kind of way, if you was previously or are still, then it has to has to be on your watch list. <clears throat> well, Chucky says uh, he's halfway through. Uh, the last episode, and Asim says he finished it last night too. Chappers says, uh, I missed The Undertaker, but he needed to go. I think he looked knackered in the ring. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And the live action sequence that he did for WrestleMania this year probably suited him more. So he could, he could, he could take breaks. I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but for me, from the outside looking in, I don't know The Undertaker, believe it or not. Um, I thought the live action sequence would have been better for him. Like I don't believe it. Than it would have been <laughs> in the ring, but yeah. Absolutely amazing. If you haven't watched it, then I highly suggest that you do so if you have an interest in wrestling or The Undertaker. I didn't watch it. I would watch it, though. Um, I do have an interest in, in old-school wrestling and The Undertaker, so I might, I might give it a watch. I might give it a yeah, watch. It's definitely worth it. I mean, it's five one-hour episodes, so you can easily you can easily do it. In. Let's watch that instead of Ozark Season 3. Jobs are good. Yeah! <laughs> this, this Ozark's looking a bit different. No, it's fine, babe. It's fine. This is what it looks like on Season 3. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I watched Magnificent Seven on Amazon Prime, uh, Prime Video, whatever it's called, on the weekend. Uh, it was a good film, good film, quite enjoyed it. Uh, it's basically Red Dead Redemption, but in video format. I know it's an old school film that's been redone, but yeah, it was alright, it was alright. Uh, and then, other than that, did, did a nice PUBG stream to 400 people, which was, which was a, uh, I think, the biggest PUBG stream we've done without any sort of front page. I don't think we've had front page on PUBG actually. So yeah, I think we biggest uh, PUBG stream we've had, which was nice. Um, and then on top of that, yesterday, with it being Father's Day, this is a bit that Bib was on about. I'll show you my uh, tweet for those that didn't see it. I got uh, a new quad monitor desk mount, or uh, so there you go on screen, or a triple monitor mount and a hat stand because I don't have four monitors yet. Um, so I did that and sorted out all my. Uh, cable management stuff so my room is just it's just infinite space it looks pretty much the same for someone that hadn't seen it but because there's nothing here on this desk like through there i've just got loads more space um so yeah different angles this is where i'm sat right now uh -da, look at the wiring it looks so much neater i mean there's still a few bits but it's fine that's as good as it's gonna get and i'm pretty happy with it so yeah it's yeah be it's beautiful it's beautiful 
Uh, but anyway, let's 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 sack that off. Let's get into the introduction. That's what you're all here for. You're all here for well, basically the fact that this is the UK's number one video podcast. My name is Graham. This is Babe. Together we are Ice Cream. And in a true ice creamy fashion, this is the scoop, your daily dose of news for the world of video games and beyond. We bring you the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories in the world of video games. And we want your thoughts and impressions on those because we give you our thoughts and impressions. We want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. That's that's kind of important because we turn this into a video podcast that goes on YouTube a little bit later on, and an audio podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So make sure you do give us those thoughts and impressions because it's important. Anyone watching on demand doesn't have the opportunity that you guys do right now, right here in the chat to get involved and talk about the Undertaker or all the other things that we're going to talk about through the day. But anyway, let's jump into the uh, split screen so we can get we can get on the full half screenage. Yes! Um, yeah. So that there actually isn't that much news today. I mean, there's loads of news from over the weekend. Um, but rather unsurprisingly, about 70% of the stories over the weekend are all The Last of Us Part 2 focused. <laughs> Be it sales targets. I know, what's the chance? Be it sales targets, be it um, how-to guides, be it um, censorship in certain other countries or, or whatever. So we've just kind of like stepped away from that. Not only that, because we haven't played through it yet, so we don't want spoilers and stuff. I mean, we could be one of those people, like Asim Tanvir, that has no life, that plays yeah. through the game. Oh, oh, what a dickhead that guy is. I know, absolute whopper. What no, absolute... Not Asim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, 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 fucking. I mean, in fairness to the whopper, he did say sorry. I didn't mean it like that. But even still, even still, mate, fucking hell, have a bit more tact than that. If that's not what you meant, it, it literally. For those of you who don't know, go check out Asim's, Asim's Twitter. If if not, never mind. Don't bother. Don't, you don't even need to. It's just just Asim was approached by a whopper of the internet. But anyway, let's jump into the news. Uh, we're not going to start with the Last of Us because we've been doing that for the past week or so, and so has everyone else. And and not that it's a bad thing; it's definitely a good thing. But we'll just mix it up a little bit. Uh, as the first bit of news, which is very relevant uh, for the day, is written by Andy Robertson for VGC that Activision has set Crash Bandicoot's four trailer reveal for Monday, which is today. It's about time leaked this week. Um, Activision has set Crash Bandicoot's uh, Forza reveal for 8pm PDT, which is 4pm here in the UK, today, June the 22nd. The Toys for Bob developed game, subtitled It's About Time, leaked earlier this week via the Taiwanese ratings board. Images from the reveal trailer then appeared online, confirming Crash Band uh, Bandicoot's Forza's October release date. In a post on Twitter, the game's developer promised the official reveal would be better than the leaks uh, fans have seen so far. The following description of Crash Bandicoot 4, a company leaks rating, um, a company leaks ri oh my god, I'll start that one again, I'm having a mare with that one. <laughs> uh, the following description of Crash, Ban uh, of Crash 4 accompanied its rating. Crash is relaxing and exploring his island in his time, 1998, when he finds a mysterious mask hidden away in a cave, Lani Loli. The mask is one of the quantum masks and apparently knows Aku Aku, Crash's mask friend. With the quantum mask returning uh, and a quantum rift appearing near ha our heroes, they decide to bravely head through different times and dimensions to stop whoever is responsible. Uh, I hit play on this. Is it just a gift? Is it? Oh, oh. wow, that's loud. Well, they, it's about time. That the audio on that is that the uh, is. Oh no, that's not even the lead one. That's their one. The audio on that was well dodged. Anyway, 2017's Crash Bandicoot Unsane Trilogy, a remastered compilation of the first three Crash games developed by Vicarious Visions, uh, Toys for Bob handled the Switch port, has sold over 10 million copies according to publisher Activision. In May, the company teased plans to release two unannounced games based on existing IP this year. Soon after, it announced uh, that remastered versions of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, developed by Vicarious Visions, will be released on September 4th, 2020. It also plans to release a new premium Call of Duty title, under understood to be, call of, uh, to be called Black Ops Cold War, and Blizzard's Shadowlands expansion for World of Warcraft is coming in the second half of 2020. Bib? Yes? Crash Bandicoot, thoughts? A uh, big fan of Crash. It's interesting. Do you think then, with the likes of the remaster of Crash Bandicoot recently, and also uh, Crash Team Racing, that they had this in mind anyway, and it was just trying to build some sort of uh, <clears throat> like investor backing, maybe, to see how how good the Crash moniker and IP is, how strong it is still. Like they must have had this up the sleeve for a while. 
I'd say so. The fact that it appeared in Uncharted, um, they've been t they've been seeding it for a while. It's one of those games that I just wanted to say as well. If you if you see me look like I'm drinking weirdly, these things that I'm drinking, these are like cheap shop coffees. Um, I was talking to BB about it. No matter how much you shake it up, it's basically it's organic coconut milk drink with coffee in it, um, and it's it's like got some some. I don't know what it is. What I don't know if it's chocolate or, or whatever. Anyway, there's lumps of stuff, so I keep drinking. I keep getting a lump of gank in my mouth. So that's what. If you see me <laughs> drinking, I'm like, blah, blah, blah. that's me like getting rid of the uh, the mush. Mmm, coffee mush. Uh, but anyway, um, so yeah, Crash was featured as a, a little playable side a little playable side mission in Uncharted Four, uh, and since then. Um, I mean, not even since then. It was probably even before then. There's always been people uh, calling for Crash to come back, but since then, there's been a lot um, of focus on Crash. So I would say, yeah, absolutely. Having Crash Team Racing, having that little skit has been the hype uh, builder, and then having the Insane Trilogy and so on. I could, uh, I can see each one being the proving ground to see whether there's there's a market for the next. Absolutely. As Asim says, uh, the Insane Trilogy and Kart Race are sold really well, so I expect this also very much uh, welcome. Although. If it's as tough as trilogy, R.I.P. me. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. yeah is it? <clears throat> I bought the trilogy for Samantha uh, for Christmas a couple of years ago. It, it looked and played a lot. At, for, uh, it, did they make it harder, <laughs> or have I just losing it? Like it sounds like you were losing it then. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I've, I've got a gauzy. I've got a gauzy mouth. I've had a cup of coffee. That's it now, isn't it? I'm just gonna. Like, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but yeah, it, it was so much harder than I remember it being. See, I didn't really difficult. I didn't play it, but I did see a lot of things from other people at the time, um, and like the bits where you jump in between platforms, uh, loads of people were just like falling off that, and they think it's because uh, the hit, not not the hitbox, but his character model box or whatever was more tighter, whereas back in the day it was more forgiving because it, you just began, you just catch the edge of it because your your character box hit the edge of it, so. Um, yeah, that seen a lot of people have said is a bit is what's made it harder. The fact that it's less forgiving now. You have to hit it directly on the money. If not, you go. Uh, Lewis Tonks, hi. I'm from Manny Stream. Hi. Uh, Hello. Welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, I did. I think we did see you the other day in chat. Uh, you mentioned something just as we'd gone offline. Uh, but hi. Welcome in. Welcome in. Manny's a good egg. We like Manny. Um, okay. Uh, Jim Butter says, have to say, not a massive fan of Crash. Boo, James. Uh, never was, but it's always nice to see classic characters make comebacks, uh, and in a pretty big way. Yeah, for sure. Um, what, were you a fan of platformers, or was it just the whole platforming thing kind of fall by the wayside with you? That's interesting to know, because if you're not a fan of Crash, then I imagine it's quite difficult to get into it. Because for me, Crash was one of the best platformers there was at the time. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say it, is, it was one of the best platformers now, purely because of how difficult it is. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like for the time, I don't think there was many games bigger when it comes to platformers like Crash was. <clears throat> it was like the PlayStation mascot for years, and then it seemed like Xbox just r pulled the rug from underneath him. But yeah, it's it's interesting to know if you if you're into those kind of games anyway. See, I um I didn't mind Crash and Spyro and, and things from that sort of time set. They, I, they were just the art style was what lost them on me more than anything. I, I, I liked playing them at the time, but I did, they didn't resonate because they were it's that that, that family friendly, almost in my mind, it was like child oriented style. Yeah. I was I was in that sort of tweener stage where you kind of want to aim a bit higher up, kind of thing. So they didn't they didn't resonate with with me that much. Uh, I love platformers, Mario fan, etc. That's true. He he has a Mario tattoo. I've seen it. Uh, oh. but, uh, but I didn't have a PS One at the time. Uh, it was around, so I never got into him. It was a Nintendo nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Madge, good morning, Madge. Uh, I'm just gonna jump back up, Madge. see if I uh, missed anything. Uh, Asim says, "Ha ha! How dare I?" Uh, As uh, Enix said, "To be honest, I played Final Fantasy VII Remake for four days straight to platinum." And Asim says, "No life." <laughs> <laughs> uh, good yeah, John, if you miss that, he's not screaming that you've actually got no life. Uh... But yeah, I was just letting you know before. Yes, yes. Uh, right a bit. David says, I was a fan of Taken and was one of my favourite wrestlers. That's why the fat man in my name is a parody of Fat Man Waddley. <laughs> Fat Man Waddley. 
Um, but yes, for those that missed it, Activision, 4 o'clock today, uh, BST, if you're in the Americas, PD time, uh, 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 PDT time even, 8 a.m. So either 8 a.m., 4 p.m., depending on where you are uh, in the world. Today, a new Activision, uh, It's About Time trailer is going to be fully shared. Obviously, this did leak. Uh, was it over the weekend? I didn't actually see. I missed the leak. Yeah. Because I was under a desk fitting out my room for pretty much all of it. Yeah, that's the thing. Yesterday was Father's Day. Woke up in the morning. Oh, got my new hoodie. Got a new jumper. All that stuff. I don't know if you can really see up there. Let me just uh, let me just go. Uh, so up there, like the, the bottles and stuff. It's not really in focus, but I've got a bunch of drinks bits as well. Uh, so I opened up all that stuff, and Danielle was like, "Do you know what? You got breakfast." In bed, although we had it at the table because it was a, a world-class bowling bush. Um, and then you don't have to do anything all day. So I was like, yeah. And then I spent all day doing manual labor, like converting my desk and putting up my monitors and changing <laughs> all the wiring and everything else. So Father's Day, a day to relax and and, and destroy yourself. Hey. Uh, arms says, louder. I'll read. Uh, what, what do you want, louder? <laughs> uh, Crash 1, the only platform I ever completed. Make of that what you will. Ooh. Is that because you enjoyed it so much that nothing could ever experience it again? Or did you hate it so much that you didn't want to go through that again? Tell us more, Madge. Tell us more. Uh, actually, speaking about tell us more, I'm absolutely not 100% going to mute my mic so I can blow my nose, but I just want to hear you tell us more, babe. Uh, so I'm going to tell you more about uh, struggling to think of what to tell you more about because all, all I could talk about is... Uh, golf and the undertaker well that's a really um, cool story i'm glad that you shared that babe i appreciate it cheers mate that. cheers you know what i mean <laughs> poet with words i know i mean poet and, and we all know it now uh, <laughs> okay let's jump into the next story and we did say there was a lot of last of us news so we didn't keep it away from you for very long not that nobody wants to see last of us content but you know we thought we'd, we'd mix it up a little but straight back into things now as the next news article from key and mayor for vg247 says the last of us part two sales smash the record to become sony's fastest selling ps4 game ever and at this point in the generation there's only really one game that could even challenge that, and that's Ghost of Tsushima, but I'm not sure it would. But anyway, The Last of Us Part 2 sales have smashed the record for Sony's fastest-selling PS4 exclusive, knocking Naughty Dog's previous record holder by the wayside. The news comes from a report published by Games Industry.biz, which concludes that The Last of Us Part 2 sales have knocked 2016's Uncharted 4 off its perch as the fastest-selling PS4 exclusive of this console generation. Well, it's not really going to be a PS4 exclusive of a previous console generation, is it? Hmm. Uh, but anyway, uh, sales from its opening week have been been approximately 1% higher than that of Uncharted 4, although the games industry report, industry report specifically clarifies that digital sales are not factored into this statistic, meaning that The Last of Us Part 2 may have smashed the record by an even wider margin, which you'd have to think that is the case. But launch sales for The Last of Us Part 2 have been roughly 76% higher than those of the series' inaugural title. Alongside this, The Last of Us Part 2 has become the UK's fastest selling box game of 2020 so far, raking, uh, raking in approximately 40% more cash than this year's previous sales juggernaut Animal Crossing New Horizons, which interestingly has fallen out of the top 10 after holding a consistent place there since its launch back in March. At the moment, Ring Fit Adventure is the second best selling game for this week, probably because there's some stock. Uh, as the report notes, it's the third week in a row, it's hard to settle for the silver medal. In related news, it seems a lot of people are pretty impressed with The Last of Us Part 2's rope physics. On top of that, The Last of Us Part 2's facial animations, which are systemic in non cinematic cutscenes, uh, meaning that they are Algorithmically, algorithmically defined as opposed to being the result of facial capture have been described as like nothing that anyone has ever seen in video games. Anyway, I'm just going to stop there because all this last bit now is just t tags off to other articles. The long story short, The Last of Us Part 2 is the fastest selling PS4 game ever. Bib, hmm. what are your thoughts on that? I don't think it's a surprise, really. I think when you've got people waiting seven years for a sequel to probably a lot of people's favourite game ever, um, and with the likes of Cyberpunk now being pushed back to... It is still going to be available on the PlayStation 4, but as it stands now, it's this, this and Ghost of Tsushima is probably the last big PS4 games until the PS5 arrives. I don't think it's any coincidence, really. Um, I... I don't want to say I was surprised that Uncharted 4 was at the top of the list. 
because again, from from my personal experience, Uncharted has never really resonated with me. I played the first one, and then I played uh, Golden Abyss on the PS Vita. They're the only two that I've ever played, so I never two. really. But him. The worst two. Well, uh, to be fair, I really enjoyed Golden Abyss on the Vita. I don't know whether or not it's because I was playing it on the Vita, but for for my enjoyment, I really enjoyed it. But um, when it comes down to Uncharted, it kind of falls by the wayside with me. It doesn't really connect with me, so I never really paid attention to it. Um, but it surprised me that that was the second, well, now the second best selling game on the console. It really does surprise me, if I'm being honest. But yeah, it's, I thought Spider Man would have been well above them too. Well, above uh, Uncharted, anyway. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised that Spider Man didn't hit that far. I wonder if it's off the back of superhero fatigue, because um, because of obviously Marvel Cinema- uh, Cinematic Universe had kind of um, a massive spike at the end. Naturally, Endgame was like uh, the biggest selling film of all time, kind of thing. So it definitely picked it back up again at the end. But with all of um, Marvel Cinematic Universe, by the time we got to uh, the third Iron Man's and things like that. People were starting to have a little bit of fatigue. We, we got uh, Avengers Assembled and Age of Ultron, and people were like, "Okay, well, this is kind of like more recycling." We know it's building to something, but we're not there yet, and it, we've yeah. kind of had it all. Um, so maybe that aligned with the fact that there has been some not particularly great superhero games. Maybe made people think, "Ah, do you know what? We'll we'll hold off buying Spider Man." And then after seeing how successful it was, maybe then they opted in, which meant it was a high selling, but not necessarily the fastest selling. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, in the chat, uh, my The Last of Us Two is digital. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, uh, the fact that it's still a percent higher in just physical sales uh, is yeah, okay, well, fair enough. It's got there, but physical sales have dropped off massively over the last uh, few years. I mean, we did have a, a like a, a scale on the sheet where uh, on screen where someone had put it into like a sheet to compare physical sales and the drop off and it was something like was it i want to say as far as 50 percent down like in terms of physical versus digital maybe maybe physical sales have dropped 50 percent so the digital has peaked um i can't remember maybe it is but if that is the case every every year that goes by physical sales drop off uh in and they've been replaced by digital sales and uncharted came out four years ago uh, so for mm. The Last of Us to still bypass that, even if it's only by a percent in physical sales today, is a huge, huge achievement. Not only being the fastest selling PS4 game ever, but doing it when there is a much, uh, well, not only, a much uh, smaller share of the um, of, of games retail being physical. Uh, so to still uh, to still sell more despite more f- uh, physical sales, uh, less physical sales happening, but also doing that in a time when where when nobody can get to the shops and things i mean obviously people can now and things are starting to open up again but but it's still not as easy as it was so that's a huge achievement and i, I reckon if if we got the digital stats there'd be a huge huge way in difference oh, yeah. there as well absolutely yeah i mean asim asim was one of the few people i actually saw by the collector's edition um if he's still in the chat how how does the digital collection look is it do you think it's uh, from your perspective worth the money that you paid for it not that i know how much you paid for it but an old edition can run into quite a few quid but uh, yeah i'm sure that surely that counts as towards the the sales figures as well if you've got a collector's edition um even with the leaks people still got behind the game which is nice to see says jim uh i'll be getting it probably end of july uh too many games at the moment um <clears throat> Yeah, I want I want to play through it on stream, but I do want to I want to wait until it's been out for a few weeks because the the, the downside with streaming the game when it's fresh, uh, and I, I figured this out when we were streaming um, God of War or something like that was a lot of people that wanted to play through it and enjoy the story that would have liked to watch the stream along with me wanted to experience the story for themselves first naturally. So I'm I'm leaving it a few weeks before touching it on the channel and then going to play The Last of Us and Last of Us Part 2 again so if anyone does want to relive it again 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 uh, for like yeah. the 15th time then there is an opportunity for that then I, I was going to do it on launch day but I mean not only the, the competition for views plus the fact that the regular viewers would be playing it as well I wouldn't want to just stream it yeah. to people that aren't necessarily our audience kind of thing um, but yeah the fact that people are getting behind it despite the leaks and stuff it's huge it's huge absolutely Enix says hated Uncharted for me, it just wasn't great at all. <laughs> Sorry, I just just got a bit of Xbox fanboy sticking my throat. 
<laughs> you hated Uncharted. I mean, I understand if it's not your game, but hated it. That's a strong word. And you play some crap as well. It's <laughs> uh, sat in the boat with me. I didn't hate it. I just, I don't know. I just never thought of even picking up the sequel or playing the sequel. I've got them all because the PlayStation was giving them all away. But I just, I never got into it enough to think. Do you know what? I'm going to invest. Is a good time into this. I don't. I, it's just one of them games. It's like I always kind of compare it to Assassin's Creed in the fact that the first one was really good, but it was a bit tedious. Um, yeah. And the second one, from then, it becomes phenomenal. Uh, Golden Abyss, you can kind of ignore. Um, so if you play through Uncharted uh, to get it finished and have your mind around the story and the characters and stuff, and then go into two, three, and four, just amazing, yeah. amazing. I played the first one, then I went through two and three. Just dulled out. What? My God, uh, I might have to download them and play through the Uncharted games again. Then, if I'm taking your recommendation for it, uh, I, may, I may dip back and have a look. But my recommendation would be to play it on the big TV and get Sam to sit through it with you, because Danielle played through all four Uncharted with me. It was that good that it was like sitting down movie night, but like five, yeah. five nights in a row. So, so yeah, she, she, Danielle was actively looking forward to playing the next part of Uncharted and then the next part of Uncharted 2 and, and so on. They do get better, they do become more cinematic, obviously, as time goes on. Um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, they're, they're amazing, they're amazing. Interesting. I'll have to I'll see what she says about that. I'm kind of thinking it's going to be a universal are you fuck playing this on the big TV during the day. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll have that discussion and see what happens. Yeah, see, see, let us know how it plays out. Let us know how it plays out. <laughs> <laughs> I might stream that bit. Uh, finished Uncharted 1 to 3 says Arms uh, had 4 since launch never played it a blockbuster game but also very straightforward yeah I mean they aren't like um, reinventing anything they're not like I mean they do tug on your emotional heartstrings in certain ways and so on um, but yeah it's, it's very much a blockbuster in that sort of sense but but the characters in it are really, really good. Uh, I think that's what kind of resonates with me as well. So enjoy, enjoy. So uh, it, it wouldn't be fair to say that it's a B Tech Indiana Jones. No, no. Is it, I mean, okay. uh, it's not. Yeah, yeah. I'll make sure I send that right way. It's not fair to say that. It's, it's. It does have some sort of like. Uh, Indiana Jones' cinematic moments, but I think that's good. Um, embracing cinema and a lot of the, uh, like quick time sort of sequency kind of things have that sort of cinematic element to it and there are some bits like there's a bit in Uncharted 4 which I'll talk about because it was shown as part of their E3 trailer was you're in like a jeep that's kind of like going down a hill and you've got people shooting at you and stuff and it's just like I can't remember what film it is but there's a car that goes down down a hill crashing through like a favela or whatever and it's basically like that big explosions and guns and, and it's yeah it's just really good it's really good um uh, where did I get to? John says Rip Mixer. Uh, just, just, just drops it in. No context. Nice. Thanks for that. Uh, anyway, moving on. It's a lovely collector's edition, great bits, and a lovely statue. Yeah, I, 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 I was tempted. The only thing for me is I don't have. I mean, I, I have obviously Metal Gear stuff up there, but I don't necessarily have the space for statues. Um, so I did, I did like the look of it. I did, I did ponder for a long, long time, and I saw. I think I don't know if it was. was you, I think you'd had it, and I think Gary was trying to get it. Um, and then I saw Nick um, and, and Tail, Nick Taylor um, from Uber. He was looking for it, and, and, and everyone talking about it and getting it at, a certain, at the same sort of point in time. I'm thinking, but no, I didn't bother in the end. I didn't bother. Um, Chapa says two is one of my favourite games possibly ever as an Uncharted. Hundred percent. It's a good game. It's a good game. Uh, the Last of Us is is one of my favourites though. Now that Days Gone has been fixed, starting to enjoy that more. Nice. Uh, Chucky says Unch Uncharted Two is up there for me. I played the whole thing with my brother watching the live movie. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's a beautiful game. The Last of Us Two, wonderfully human. Loved every moment. I'll watch you play it, Mister. You want to see our reactions? Yeah. Uh, uh, need to play iRobot. I mean, Detroit Become Human. That's another one I need to finish. Um, oh, since hashtag accusation gate. Since I could get accusation gate started, lots of them. Employees from Mixer, etc. Uh, Phil Spencer's got involved, but not being called out. The people actually message about it. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. I saw that all this morning. It was that Milan guy that used to work in the Mixer team. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, uh, we'll kind of let it play out before we report on it because it's kind of news in progress at the moment. But there was um, a member of the Mixer team. I don't actually know what he did. I think he was partnerships or something. Now, this, I've, on, I've only got this from my scraping news this morning, so I could be wrong. Uh, anyway, a member of the mixed team called Milan, 
I think his name was. Um, and long story short, his boss, uh, this is allegedly all, by the way. None of this is, is confirmed. I don't know. I'm just going to say all allegedly is what I saw. Uh, one of his boss made some horrendous comments about uh, slavery to him and him being a black guy. Obviously, those comments were awful uh but not only from a racial side of things the comments were awful because the this per, this person who was his boss was kind of like a partner manager and essentially said that all mixer partners were her slaves and their content and their success was all based on her and so on so basically she was some power hungry sort of nasty person from the sounds of it anyway long story short this guy reported this internally and it passed it on to HR, and HR admitted passing on the uh, the slavery comments and, and things as well, so it wasn't dealt with very well. Um, anyway, he tweeted about that, and Phil Spencer said, oh, do you know what, I'm really sorry to hear this. Uh, uh, we, we don't like any of this and stuff in our teams, and we want to make sure we get rid of it. <laughs> and then his response to, to that was, yeah, I actually emailed you about this when when I was there, and you didn't do anything about uh... it. <laughs> and it, it's just all the comments after that was just yikes, yikes. Yeah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. So yeah, that's, the reason we're not got it in is because obviously it's, it's a story that's still in progress. But once that happens, then yeah, we will no doubt pick it up at that point in time. But that's the gist of it. That's where I saw it up to. It may have progressed since that. Uh, I may have not got the full story yet. Um, but that's where we're up to. Uh, business partnerships is going to be a huge topic, and I'm expecting questions to be thrown at me tomorrow in my talk. Um, the talk that he's talking about, by the way, is just is just him. He just regularly talks to himself, so that's how he knows that he's going to have the question thrown at him. That's just what John does. Now, what talk is it? What talk is it? You did tell me, uh, but you have that many talks that I can't remember. <laughs> there was a scene like that in either a Jewel of the Nile or a Man's in the Stone. Yeah, maybe it was something like that. Uh, yeah, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. For those of you that missed it, The Last of Us Part 2 has smashed Sony's record to become the fastest selling ever PS4 game. The record previously held by Uncharted 4 and held for four years has been smashed by uh, The Last of Us. So it's smashed. It's been broken by 1%, which, I mean, it's still a, a big feat to do that for physical sales at this point in time, but we know it's undoubtedly been smashed once you start to add digital in, just because of the, uh, the shift toward digital over the past four years. Uh, true. Do you, it's interesting that they don't actually include the digital sales into that because you're still selling the game. So why is it? Why have they not included it yet? It's Sony. Um, Sony don't share their their sales data, um, and because digital so dumb. the digital sales would go straight through the PS Store. Uh, retailers uh, have all of their sales. Uh, like all physical retail stuff is, is shared, uh, I believe. Uh, I don't actually know. I mean, this is where, where my weakness comes in. I don't know the full retail purchasing side of things, but I believe that all physical sales can be tracked. Uh, oh, yeah, let's just look at that. They can be tracked, whereas digital requires Sony as the outlet to share that data, but Sony doesn't share that data, so we don't really know. Um, uh, over eight employees come forward saying they email Phil about the issue, so it wasn't just him. Awkward. Uh, do they not share because they take uh, like eight percent cut out of it on digital? I'm not sure what what cut they take. I doubt it'd be eighty. Um, but um, yeah, even if they shared it, they don't have to share the actual cut that they take. I don't I don't think it's as high as eighty. Um, but yeah, they don't share whatever it is. They don't share the numbers. I think it's, it's I think it's like a smoke and mirrors kind of thing. If you start sharing what stores give then people can start to create more detailed breakdown of the value proposition of being featured on something like a playstation store and it, long story short if sony holds the only platform to sell the games to their uh, their format uh, of any substance so if, if if physical dries out and there's only digital and you can only get them from sony and the conversion rate is really shit, and you just you'd be like, oh, do you know what? I, I don't even. I'm not even going to bother re releasing on Sony because it doesn't sell very well, or people look at it and then don't buy it because the saw is clunky or, or whatever it is. Anyway, long story short, they don't share any of that information. They just go, yeah, loads are sold here, so you don't have the information. All you can do is just just go with it. That's my kind of understanding. Smoke and mirrors. The less you know, the less people have got to pick apart. Uh, pick apart. But yeah, I know retail only take eight percent from game sales. Do you know? I think it's. I think it's more like that. Maybe twenty. But I don't think it's anywhere near like 80. I don't think it's mm. the vast majority. Um, anyway, let's move forward. Let's move forward. Next bit of news discussing. Uh, gone for a moment. 
Woo! There we go. EA's decision to make FIFA 21 on PC, the same as the PS4 and the Xbox One version, isn't going down well. Subtitle, own goal, written by Wesleyan Pool for Eurogamer. Um, so for this, for the context, we covered this last week, and we did have our initial sort of like, hmm, okay, not sure about that. So for those of you that didn't read the syntax, uh, read between the lines of that, FIFA 21 is going to be like the PS4 and Xbox One version, but won't be upscaled to be like the PS5 and Xbox Series X version. But anyway, let's jump forward. Uh, buried within an FAQ on EA's website, it, it's confirmation that the PC version of FIFA 21 is the same as the PS4 and Xbox One version, a revelation that has tempered excitement about the series coming to Steam for the first time. PC gamers, some so in disbelief at the news uh, that they thought it was a mistake, were left scratching their heads at the, de the decision. Why would EA Sports not release a version of FIFA 21 on PC that is on par with the PS5 and Xbox Series X version of the hugely popular football game? I asked EA for an explanation following the news and have yet to receive a response. Without explanation, we're left to speculate. But first, let's run through what EA has said about the next-gen versions of the game. Unfortunately, EA hasn't said much that's meaningful about FIFA 21 and PS5 and Xbox Series X. Well, this is a great setup for, the, for let's run through what they've said. They haven't said much. Uh, its language to describe the game is at best vague, at worst eye-rolling marketing gobbledygook. Controller haptics mean you can sense the impact of shots, passes, catches, kicks and tackles. A new dual sense control on PS5 with rich and responsive haptic feedback deepens the gameplay experience, letting you feel the rhythm of the game in your hands. Okay, sense and rhythm, nice. Uh, that's... Yeah, oh, everything that you need in football games. <laughs> uh, then there are the, the blazing fast load times, which EA means uh, you will get into the game quicker than ever, but what does this actually mean? Never lose focus on stadium environments, uh, Never lose focus. A stadium environment will load with unprecedented speed, letting you kick off in seconds, EA said. There's oh, great style. Ah, I see, wonderful. There's deferred lighting and rendering too. Authentic new environments unlocked by a deferred lighting system create ultra-realistic football experiences and player fidelity enhancing the game in every part of the stadium. Uh, expect reimagined player bodies. Uh, Next-gen technology creates deeper definition in player physiques, while dynamic lighting accentuates details such as faces, hair, kits, and uniforms, and take athletes to a whole new level of realism. Uh, the more we go on, the vaguer things get. Enhanced animation technology in FIFA enables you to experience ultra-responsive and realistic player movement, EA said. Here's my favourite note about next-gen FIFA 21. Off-ball humanisation. <laughs> what the fuck? From adjusting shin pads in the 89th minute to screaming for passes in the end zone, player humanisation unlocks the most authentic character behaviours ever seen in sports video games, letting you see the detail and feel all the emotion of football at the highest level. And fine. You, kind of, you know what it feels like? They're running out of hype words. <laughs> do you know what I mean? They're just coming up with some absolute pride. But do anyway. You, do you know I'm, I'm going to stop there. Uh, just because it's just going through the stuff that, that can be found. I mean, would you, do you want me to keep going through what's in FIFA? Um, do you know what? Actually, I will do. Just just because I want to hear Wes Ian Poole's article kind of pulling it apart. I do like articles where people pull apart PR stuff because a lot of it is fluffy for the sake of fluffy. Uh, and finally, there's game day immersion. So new contextual player bench and fan reactions let you uh, feel the explosive passion of a last minute winner or a game clinching touchdown. And pre-game cinematics deliver an unprecedented match day experience to immerse you in the sights and sounds of professional football. That's a lot to take in, but is any of this guff impossible on PC? I <laughs> I don't think so. So, time for some speculation. I suspect this is a pretty simple business decision. It's probably easier for EA... I'm glad I continued with this now because we have come full circle. There we go. It's probably easier for EA to scale FIFA 21 to lower spec machines than it is to machines that are on par with, for example, a PS5. As our friends at Digital Foundry have talked about, the next-gen consoles set a new bar. It's far more likely that it just makes more sense for EA to release FIFA 21 on PC as the current-gen versions, given the bulk of PC FIFA users are probably playing on an old or medium-powered PC. Whatever the reason, some FIFA PC users feel aggrieved. I've seen numerous posts on social media and the various FIFA subreddits from PC players complaining that their high-powered rigs won't be put to good use that they won't get the fancy new tech that's in the next-gen console versions. Summing up the sentiment, Redditor Tromolo said, I'd leave a comment here, but I need to pre-order the Ultimate Edition of the outdated FIFA 21 version for the most powerful console out there. Uh, it's worth noting 
there are some who perhaps understand EA's thinking, if indeed we're on the right track on that. Uh, what percent of PC gamers have a PC that is the equivalent of a 3700X or 2080 Super? Asked Redditor B417 this week. People assume every PC gamer has a 64-core CPU, the Titan RTX, when in reality, most people have pretty modest systems. It's going to take a short while for the average PC to catch up to the next-gen systems. It's also worth noting that EA has done this before FIFA on PC, like behind the console uh, v versions when it came to phone is buzzing away. Just mute that one. Get out of here. Uh... <clears throat> uh, FIFA lagged uh, behind on PCs. Uh, now FIFA on PC lagged behind the console versions when it came to features and even the game engine itself during the early years of the last decade. It wasn't until the release of FIFA 15 in 2014 that the PC version used all the uh, sports Ignite engine bells and whistles that were present on PS4 and Xbox One. It's quite funny to look back at EA's marketing speak when it talked about how Ignite would improve FIFA. It would give players human-like intelligence, 10 times greater animation fidelity, and more accurate environments, plus... Car? Char? Change? I don't know. Uh, even before then, for a number of uh, years, the PC version of the massive selling series lacked the features found in the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions, although apparently it was achieved with FIFA 12. Now, of course, all versions of FIFA use the Frostbite engine. So FIFA 21 is coming to PC as we expected, and yay, it's coming to Steam 2, but the version of the game headed to PC is not the one some wanted, even if it's the one most PC games will be able to play. Perhaps we'll have to wait for FIFA 22, or even FIFA 23, before there's parity again. As a man with a PC, what are your thoughts on that, babe? Uh, well, there's two very good points that have been made in this article, one of which I never even considered. The first part uh, was... What percentage of PC gamers have a PC that's equivalent to a 3700 or a 2080 Super? That is a very good point, which I never even thought about. The likelihood that a lot of people have those, like I don't have one of those, so I would never be able to compete with the PlayStation or uh, the Xbox versions of that game. I would, if I could, have to play this on the lowest setting possible. Uh, I imagine if it's if I'm comparing it to the Xbox and the PlayStation 4, my graphics card don't even come. Uh, sorry, PlayStation 5, my graphics card doesn't come anywhere close to those. Uh, I'm running a 10, uh, 1060 Ti, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm miles away from these, uh, so I never would be able to play this in full thing anyway. However, the sales of FIFA on the PC cannot be anywhere close to what it is on the Xbox or the PS4. It can't. It can't. I can't. I can't imagine it. Can you? Who's playing FIFA on a PC? And that's no, that's not me. That's not me taking the piss or anything like that. It just doesn't feel like FIFA will be played on PC by a lot of people. If you go into the coin trading uh, or the transfer market or anything like that, the prices of the players on PC are so much cheaper than they are on the Xbox and PS4. And I think that's due to the amount of people that are playing it. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I think that that like you said two, there's two two parts to it the fact that there isn't as many people playing fifa so it doesn't command the same sort of re resource development like like the article mentioned scaling the game down if you have an all singing all dancing version of the game and you want it to be able to be scaled uh, to play on on the 2080 uh, rtx uh, or a titan whatever then fine job's good enough it will do. I mean, I'll absolutely piss it out and have shitloads of processing power left over and, and yeah, the graphics absolutely popping, pristine. But then you try squash that down into someone that's got like a, a 960 or something, then that's absolutely not going to happen. So you have to start to lose things out and, and drop uh, drop frame rates and, and whatever. But it's hard to squash something bigger into something smaller, that's what she said. Uh, but it's, it's easier to go the other way. If, you, like, if you've got something smaller then, and you don't have to cut as much, then it works. Uh, the issue is the PC is a cross-generational console. Uh, it's not a console. And, and PC users right across the world are smashing their keyboards trying to angry, uh, angry response to that. But from, from this, we're, talk, we're looking at a PC as a console because it's playing a console game. So FIFA comes out on the Xbox one and the xbox series x it comes out on the ps4 and the ps5 so they make two different versions for the console uh uh for the consoles whereas pc one has a as a, a much smaller audience and two is essentially a, two consoles in one 
So they you can't cr release the PS5 version and play that on, on the PS4 because it's a completely fundamental, uh, fundamentally different game. The PS4 version isn't the PS5 version. They are different. They, they, they look the same in terms of marketing and so on, but everything that's going on under, under the hood is, is, is hugely different. Um, and on PC, you can't just have two in one. So... It's it's difficult. I mean, what I, I don't know what the right answer for them is. There, I think that yeah. as much as crap as it is for people that play football games on PC, it's still a business decision, and there isn't the install base there that commands this clearly. Because I mean, EA are very good at making money. They like to make money. They do it too much uh, some uh, sometimes. Star Wars Battlefront Two, um, but they. They are good at it, so they wouldn't do something that would just throw money away. Yeah, let's let's absolutely develop a PS5 slash Xbox Series X version of FIFA to go out on PC that only the top 10% of all PC owners can play. And then out of that top 10%, there's only 1% that actually play FIFA on PC. So 1% of the top 10%. It's like, like they're just like, well, we're not going to earn the money back from the time spent developing it so it's a lot of people like to like to hate big companies like EA and so on for whatever reasons some of them may be valid some of them may not um, but just because they're not bringing out the full HD version to PC when the install base doesn't command it it's, it's the same as FIFA bringing out a legacy edition on switch that's where they can invest enough time to create a legacy edition um, but not enough time to build a complete standalone from scratch uh, from the ground up version for that system that's fully maintained because there isn't the install absolute motor bikeage going on outside I apologize uh, yeah. so yeah there isn't the money there so if, if there was they'd go for it but there isn't so it's, it's it sucks for the for the few people that have um, that problem but the majority of people wouldn't be able to run it or, or wouldn't play it there anyway and most most content creators that I know that have high powered rigs still play it on, on console because that's where the market is that's where the, everything and the focus is so yeah uh control fifa 21 with your dreamcast maracas <laughs> yeah. says Madge. uh enix says apologies just realized microsoft has removed the mixer tab on the xbox dashboard uh people shouldn't kick off about fifa 21 coming to the pc even if it's on the ps4 uh, even if it's the ps4 xbox one version when we won't get next gen versions till a year later will be small upgrades i mean you can guarantee there'll be some visual upgrades. Uh, you will see that, I imagine, uh, off the bat, in terms of, like, obviously the RTX stuff. I know PCs can do RTX stuff anyway, but, but like, ray tracing bits, and you'll see those. I think those are probably going to be the easier wins. You want, But you want, yeah, see the full uh, benefits of the new generation until much, much further into it. Um, but, yeah, I think... And I know, I know a lot of PCs are hyped up not hyped up uh, overpowered in terms of they will be able to make use of it but a lot of pcs you also want I, I i mean i've got quite a powerful pc and i don't have an rtx graphics card in it. i've got a 1080 ti so shitloads of power no ray tracing so all of that rtx stuff that comes into the uh, next gen version of fifa is, is kind of lost on my pc because i'm not going to make any use of it I, can't, I don't have rtx so yeah um the issue with people constantly saying i'll just play it on pc well but a very small amount have a 2070 suit up uh, and above. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, if it's PC, surely you get Football Manager rather than FIFA. FIFA me has always struck me as a console game more than PC. Uh, I, do you know, I agree. There's some games that, that are controller games. Uh, like, obviously, a lot of people love playing FPS on uh, a controller, but FPS, for most people... Oh, speaking about controller, man's covered in crap from yesterday's desks compared <laughs> most people um will agree that to get the the lofty heights of controller gameplay then using mouse and keyboard gives you the advantage fps stuff like that you can absolutely smash it on on a keyboard but sports games like football very i don't know anyone that, that plays football on a mouse uh, on a mouse and keyboard it's all controller based um is it even possible i mean you've got I suppose it is your 360 movement you could do with the mouse but it just just seems bizarre seems bizarre um so yeah i mean i would say if, by i know that you can play with con, uh, con, controller on pc as well so i'm not forgetting that but that's not where the focus is if it's a, if it's a game created for controllers and the audience all play on controllers on a system that's designed for controllers then do you know what the, the tagline says own goal but i don't really think it is i'm not sure 
I what I don't think it's a too bad a thing myself. If you if you have to sacrifice something, then you sacrifice the needs of the few. Uh, yeah. Now the needs of the many outweigh the needs of few. Quote Spock from Star Trek. David will uh, appreciate that reference, no doubt. Um, but yeah, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And if more people are playing it on console, and more people are going to be playing uh, RTX versions on the PS5, and you, you, not only like developing. Oh, last year we, we developed FIFA 20, and it was out. Um, on the PS4 and the Xbox uh, One X, ta-da! And we've got, did they have a version on the PC? I'm assuming they did. So they've gone from creating three versions plus the Legacy Edition to creating the PS4 and the PS5, the Xbox One X and the Xbox Series X plus the Legacy Edition. They've almost doubled their, their capacity, their output there. I mean, they pretty much have done because the PC and, and the Legacy versions are minimal compared to their, their main area. So they're already doubling what they're putting out. They can't double that again for, uh, a very very minute subsection of the audience so yeah i wouldn't say it's an on goal at all it's an on goal because it's a nice sensationalist tagline to put that in but it's not really an on goal whatsoever it's, if it's a very small percentage of people that's my thoughts what are your thoughts do you agree yeah yeah i agree I've, i feel if you need to cater to the bigger audience and straight out of the box i don't think people have the power uh, capable of running fifa 21 at its core that's the reason why they're moving on to next gen with the console version. So I feel like we are going to have to, the PC uh, PC audience, unfortunately, are going to have to play catch up uh, for the next year or so afterwards. Um, but yeah, I, why would why would EA want to create something as beautiful as some of the character models that are sorry the player models, not character models, Jesus, real life football, <laughs> but uh, some of the the player models in the game to look that good and then have to you know have another team working on potentially bringing the graphics down or creating a different version so that it runs on pcs it's you might as well just keep the same engine for the time being and use what's available to you until people like i don't have i would never be able to play it um but that's me uh, i'm not a pc if it did again it'd have to be right down to the bottom so it'd just be like playing a version on the playstation 4 anyway but yeah that's just the way that i look at it for the moment i imagine they're looking at how many people buy it on the PC and think, you know what, it's probably not worth the time and investment for the time being to port it over to the PC. It's, I imagine that NFL and FIFA are the lowest selling EA games for PC, I would argue. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I think top of the list would be The Sims and Battlefield, surely. Oh yeah, I reckon so. Maybe, maybe there might be a little bit disparity between the sports games, like maybe an NHL might sit lower if that even comes out on PC. Um, but if not, yeah, I completely agree with the sentiment. There'd be more people playing the immersive story games as opposed to start, as opposed to sports games on PC. Um, but even though they are the biggest, most selling, uh, biggest, uh, most continuously selling games, but that's because their annual releases on console rather than PC as such. But yeah, mm. I, I completely agree with that. Um, yeah, it makes sense for me. I mean, it's a bit shit if that's where you were planning to play it, but it just kind of it's kind of one of those things. It's a new generation. A new generation doesn't mean a continuation of everything that's happening. A new generation is change. Uh, that's what it is fundamentally at its core, and that requires like to, what, what's the phrase? Uh, to, you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. That level of change requires some sacrifice. So you have to get rid of the eggs to make the omelet. Ta-da! Jobs are done, uh, and that is just the thing. They can't just throw it out and go oh well do you know what that top one percent of the top ten percent um that are going to play this yeah you guys are all fine but everyone else you're going to struggle to play it on yourselves then it's it's a poor business decision once again mm. i mean like i said people always expect the most from video game companies especially the big ones because they've got all the money um but they've got all the money because they made the smart decisions and the smart decision isn't to sacrifice the needs of the manager so that you can cater to the few. Uh, so yeah, it's, it, it's not great for the people that are in that situation, but that's just kind of is what it is. I'd, be, I'd probably be making the same decisions if, uh, if all the facts are as I'm running them over in my head. Uh, but anyway, let's move forward. One final story, and it's a nice free bit of content, not even content, a free bit of video games for everyone. We'll finish up on as written by Stephanie Nunnally for VG247. This came out over the weekend, and you have a few days left to get it. But Injustice Gods Among Us Ultimate Edition is free for everyone to keep on Steam, PS4, and the Xbox One. So Injustice Gods Among Us Ultimate Edition is free to download and keep between now and June the 25th. So that's just three days. Steam users and those with a PS4 or Xbox One can, for a limited time, download and keep Injustice Gods Among Us Ultimate Edition. The Ultimate Edition features the main roster as as well as an additional six characters, over 30 skins, and 60 Star Labs missions. 
Injustice was first released on last-gen consoles in spring 2013, and the Ultimate Edition arrived later that year in November, just in time for the launch of the PS4 and the Xbox One. The sequel, Injustice 2, was released in 2017. And I thought that was a video I was going to play that whilst I was, uh, whilst I was uh, finishing up, but, but it's not a video, so let's just look at the image. Ta-da! <laughs> it's, oh, never mind. It's not, not, even let, not even let me click on it. But there we go. If you have PC or a PS4, or an Xbox One, and you want something new to play, Injustice Gods Among Us is free uh, out now, and it's the Ultimate Edition as well, with all of the extra content. Fantastic game. Is it? I, I finished this one, yeah. I, for a second there, even though I've, even though you put this story in and I've added it to the list, I thought this was the second one, and I was absolutely buzzing, and then I realised that Gods Among Us was the first one. Um, so I've actually already finished this on, P, on PS4 many, many years ago. Um, but it is a brilliant, brilliant game. If you like fighting games... Um, then this is definitely right up your street. The storyline's class. The cinematics are class. Um, it is. It got a little bit difficult towards the end, if I'm being honest. Um, it doesn't start out easy, but it just gets progressively harder, like you would expect from a fighting game. Um, but the story is brilliant. I haven't got the Ultimate Edition, so I may actually re-download it and finish the Ultimate Edition if it's got like more content at the end of it, like a few more missions to do. But yeah, I actually finished this many years ago. Brilliant uh... game. Injustice Gods Among Us Ultimate Edition purchased on PS4 and Steam. Jobs are good. And make sure you do it now. I've just done it on stream. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I haven't ever played this. I I remember seeing it at MCM, I think, way back when. It must have been the 2013 MCM. It must have been. Um, what was it? Actually, I think it, I think it was the winter MCM, so it must have been like the uh, the uh, ultimate edition, which was coming out for Xbox and PS4 and so on back then. So yeah, that must have been what I saw. Uh, okay, I remember seeing it then, and to go, oh, give that a try. And it's one of those things that's been on the give it a try list for years and years and years. But now I have it for free. I'm gonna definitely not give it a try. Yeah, because that's what I do. But you guys can, you can, you guys can. Um, uh, if there's a big enough community for someone, uh, for it, someone will come up with patches and mods to give 4K rendering eventually, if you're done. Um, that's the thing, though. There isn't really that sort of community around um, FIFA. Or not that I've seen. Maybe there is. I mean, that's a bit of a uh, ignorant statement because I haven't done my research uh, into that, to be fair. But I know that there is huge thriving editing and modding communities for uh, Pezzas because it's a huge part of the, the game uh, in that sort of sense. It has been forever, whereas FIFA comes ready-made and the kind of, uh, part of the benefit of FIFA is pick up and play but then again like I say I've not done my research someone could just get actually there's shitloads of modding stuff and people are still playing FIFA 12 or whatever but um yeah I, I just don't think it's there someone feel free to correct me if that isn't correct anyway ju Injustice will offer you more combat lab scenarios to play but no extra story stuff all right well that's that's still a little bit of extra content they didn't obviously have to do that I mean I don't know how long the the combat lab scenarios have been knocking around for but i mean again it's still free content so you take it wouldn't you yeah 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 and even if you're not 100 percent sure well it's free get it now and then if you get it within the next three days you get to uh, download it and then keep it so get just get it in your library that's the best thing steam ps4 and xbox one but that is the end of things we like i like to finish on a freebie it's always good to finish start a week by finishing with free stuff yeah 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 yeah. um although i do say we're finishing we aren't going very far because next up is masters of the league uh, i did see a message in the chat very early on which i was going to respond to and just didn't because i'm ignorant again patriotic wolf uh if you're still here pez today yes Yes, there is Pez today. Apologies for taking about an hour or whatever it was to get back to you. But yes, we will go offline now. We're going to wrap up the scoop and we'll come back on with um, like the, the transfer window episode of yeah. Masters of the League. We've just finished the league. We have finished top of the league, promoted to the Premiership as champions. And now we have the difficult decisions of adding to our team. Champions in the chat says, Masters of the League! Yeah. 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 Uh, it was previously on PS Plus uh, subs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I think I do remember that. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I, I think that's where I got it from. It was many years ago, but I'm sure that's where I got it from. Well, if you haven't got it before on PS Plus, then oh, Injustice got someone's get now. Get now. Um, so yeah, we are going to go offline. We're going to wrap things up. We will jump back on though. The channel will go off. It could be ten, could be fifteen minutes, depending on how long it takes to get everything back in place. It may even be a touch longer than that because. Um, my screens, long story short, my screens are set back further, um, which might mean I have to 
cut things for green screen reasons, but we'll see, we'll see. It shouldn't take that long. Uh, just just, just talk amongst yourselves in the chat while we go offline, get things done and come back on. Yeah. But before we do that, before we go off to come back on, Bib, is there anything that you would like to add? <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me, but you've just absolutely bottomed out at my end. Video game media. I need a sticky fucking label of oh. some shit oh. to be put on my seat on my TV, so that when I log on in the morning, I think, do you know what, chatbot. But anyway, I'm just padding because I can see it actually loading. But yeah, if you do see any video game news knocking around the social media platform of your choice, you have a job to do for us. If you want to add your thoughts and opinions, that'll be fantastic. But you need to send it to us. And there's two ways you can do that. You can tag us in at we've got a Binio, at Graham underscore day, and of course at Ice Cream Uploads across all social medias. Not only that, though, we have a Discord. In the little left hand side, there is a tab that says the scoop. We need the link to the article, and we also need your thoughts and opinions because guess what? We had our thoughts and opinions the very next day. At what time, Mr. Graham Day? 10 a.m. ish. Chatbot is still loading. It's kind of shitting itself a little bit. <laughs> I think it's just it just stopped on like one eighth. Well, your connection kind of shit itself. I don't know if you can hear me. You kind of as I threw it to you, you kind of like froze mid game, uh, and then it it caught back up. But luckily, you were padding for the chatbot, so we didn't really miss anything. We still got your full sort of uh, oh, great style social slash Discord skit there. I did type exclamation mark social thinking, oh, Slapbot's got, uh, so, uh, it's got to be there now, but no, it's clearly just shit itself. Do you know what? At Ice Cream Uploads spoilers, that's what it is across all social channels. You don't even have to wait for the exclamation mark socials, but it, once Chatbot does get going, you can, um, I did say Slackbot a minute ago, once, once Chatbot gets going, you can use that to get access to our social channels by using exclamation mark socials or our Discord using exclamation mark Discord, funnily enough. But anyway, we are going to drop off I say, as I say, we'll, we'll get everything set. We'll, we'll come back on with Masters of the League. But, yeah, until then, have yourselves a fantastic day. And take the advice of all of these people in the chat dropping that sexy blue emote. And that advice is to stay frosty. <laughs>